When it comes to planting, accuracy is what matters. Accuracy affects your yields, and at White Planner, we build planters to help you achieve and maintain maximum accuracy. With our technology at crucial points in the planter's operation, our design allows seed to move efficiently and uninterrupted from hopper to placement. We pledge to give you a planter that delivers high-level accuracy and will continue to provide that accuracy consistently time and time again. Multiple studies have shown us the effect of spacing and depth on crop yields. In corn, a change of just an inch can mean many bushels an acre in loss from both reduction in population and the stress on the plant itself. In beans, even slight variations in depth can have an enormous impact on germination. For the conscientious farmer, accuracy is not a luxury. It's a necessity with bottom line results. There are fundamental differences between our planter and many others. Here are just a few. First, white planters use a positive air system instead of a vacuum. It does not require seals that can fail and it requires less energy for accurate operation. Vacuum systems require air seals that can and do wear out over time. In most vacuum systems, even a slight diminishment in the vacuum strength can have a significant impact on singulation. Vacuum systems also consistently require a relatively large amount of power for accurate operation. Interruptions in that power can affect accuracy. Vacuum systems use a high degree of suction that can sometimes pull portions of seed coat through the vacuum hole, causing sticking and delay off the seed plate. Additionally, portions of seed coating can become lodged in the holes, causing skips. Next, the seed cells on the white planter's disc hold seeds a consistent distance apart. The holes on competitive smooth seed discs can allow seeds to have relatively large variations in spacing, resulting in large variations in planting. White planter seed plates have cells designed to securely hold the seed in a set position and relative distance. Some competitive designs have discs without cells. With such a design, seed can be gripped in different positions, orientations, and relative distances to the seed dropped on either side. Another important distinction is the edge drop system. The white planter's edge drop system drops seed slightly forward from vertical. This allows the seed to travel down a relatively short distance, mostly in free fall, down through the seed tube. Other planters drop the seed higher and straight down. This allows more opportunity for ricochet and misplacement. Another element important on the white planter is how quickly the seed disc can be changed. On many other planters, the entire hopper must be removed. By making it simple on the white planter, it saves time and effort. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, there's only one wearing part on a white planter's meter. The white planter's meter only has one moving part, and the simple replacement of the brushes keeps your planter dependable and accurate. Our competitors' planters feature gaskets, seals, wear indicators, and may even require periodic replacement of the meter housing and seed disc. While seeing planters run can tell you some of the things about their accuracy, it really takes seeing the results to learn the rest of the story. So White Planters dealer Jay Funky took us to several fields so we could compare the accuracy and results. Here's Jay. We have a white 8816 box planter. We're using three bushel boxes on this planter and this is no-tilled into soybean stubble. And you can see this field has actually weathered it really well considering that in the last 10 days we've had almost 11 inches of rain. The uh, uh, washing is very non-existent. The stand looks like it's very well spaced and has come up very evenly. And I think we're gonna see some nice things when we enter this field. What we're showing here is we're showing our spacing in a 17 and a half foot area and we have a, a count in this 34, or in this 17 and a half feet area of 34 plants, which equates to 34,000 seeds per acre. And if you look at the spacing, it's all very evenly matched. You're seeing a lot of it, you know, spaced right at that six inches, five and a half, six inches. You see no doubles in this particular area in the field. And I'm gonna walk just a little bit past here, show that we didn't try and pick the best spot in the field and I still have walked another 15, 20 feet, and there is not there in this row of corn. We, don't, we have very good spacing. It looks like everything came up. And if you look at the rows that are right next to it, they are also in very good shape. We have one spot right here. It's the only spot in three full rows where we've seen that. 
This farmer is going to be very happy with his final yield in this field. What we have here is a soybean field that it would, had a uh, soil finisher go over it and then it was planted. Uh, this was planted with a Kinsey 3600 uh, model, excuse me, model 3600 planter, 16 row planter. Again, done by a very good operator. His uh, planting speed was around four and a half mile an hour. And we just did a stand count in our 17 and a half feet. Looks like he has a 30,000 stand count. Knowing the farm that this is on, I'm guessing they were shooting for a 32,000. So technically within the limits of, but what we do see when we do our 17 and a half feet as we see uh, one skip here, we've got another skip here, and a third skip here. So, uh, and then a, just a couple of bunching, you don't see very much. You see reasonable spacing, but again, here we can find them three inches apart, and then here we're 11 inches total. So these should be split up someplace in there. And you've got the same thing going here, where you've got uh, 14 inches here. So we're, our not quite the picket fence look that we'd really like to see. We have a lot of a lot of different emergence dates here. You can see that we have some corn here that just come out of the ground here in the last day or two and we have some that's been out a few more days and a few days before that and then you go all the way back up here where it obviously came out the quickest in all the corn that we're seeing here but it does look like they did a reasonable good job with the residue managers uh, moving the trash off. But overall, not a bad looking field. He will grow corn. He should have a good chance of 200 bushel of corn in this field, giving us rain and enough fertilizer. We have a uh, field that was planted with a case planter that was purchased new two years ago. It is a 16 row center fill planter. And as you can see, they're a type of tillage. They're doing a, a minimum type of tillage where they're doing some deeper ripping and then they're coming back in with a finisher. Very good operators, very in tune with what they're doing. What we are gonna see here though a little bit is our spacing isn't quite as accurate as I'd like to see it. I mean, it's got some, some good deal. We do have a late emerging seed right here, which isn't too bad, but if you look at these two, they're four inches apart. And then when you come, total in, for the three kernels there you're looking at 12 inches so they really should be on a six inch spacing and as we go further in here we have one that probably just didn't come up but again we see five inch spacing then we see eight inch spacing and now here we have seven and a half inch spacing and then we get back to a five inch space um, not bad we did have a Randy and I counted it we do have 33 plants in our 17 and a half foot track. So this is going to come out to be, I'm gonna guess he was trying to put it in at around 36 by looking at a couple of misses that are in here, which probably not the fault of the planter, but he should have a, a decent yield. And again, this is some ground that should be 200 bushel plus ground at 33,000 final count. Should be someplace 165 to 210. This is a white 8700 lift and rotate planter. We have 16 20 inch rows with the planter. We are looking at a spacing here, a little more distance between each one of our, our stocks. The initial count on the stocks was supposed to be 33.5 and we're actually looking at a final stand count of 34,000 in this field. The field has been vertical tillage. This is corn on corn. It was uh, VT'd in the fall and then VT'd in the spring and planted into. So if you look at this, we can look at our spacing. We're looking at our spacing being everywhere from about eight to nine inches between each stock. And you can see the consistency here. We have no doubles in this particular area. Uh, we may see right here where we have a little closer spacing, but even when you're closer spacing here, you're looking at seven inches versus being at a, a sometime where we're seeing three inches in our 30 inch rows. That's one of the advantages of 20 inch corn. We still have that spacing for additional light. And I know in this particular producer's field, he feels that he's been doing this for many years. He's picking up anywhere from a 10 to 15% yield advantage. We're running this on 315 inches in case you wanna know, versus the 17 and a half foot that we've been looking at on the 30 inch um, 
rows in our 30 inch corn. If you look at the rows on either side, you can see that we don't have any double. Oh, here's one that's close. We probably have one there that's about four inches apart. Still manageable. And I know that, again, there was a little discussion whether we might have some problems with our seed firmers dragging some kernels. It does look like we've got a good stand and the emergence on this is very even. Looks like it must have come out of the ground very similar time. You don't see any small stalks. Very nice field of corn. If we have a 33,000 count using our numbers from before, we're looking at someplace around 165 on the bottom side to up to 245 on the top side. What we have here is a uh, John Deere 1770 ND 24 row 30 inch planter. And uh, we've done a final stand count in our 17 and a half feet. And we're at 27 plants in our 17 and a half feet, which now as we look through it here, we have a skip right at the start of our, our uh, marking. And then we come in and we have another skip and we're digging up an area right here to see if we can find a kernel. But we've got four skips. We got a fifth skip here, sixth skip here. And at the end of our tape, we have another skip here. So with our seven skips, if we had that in, that would tell us they were probably trying to be someplace around a 34,000 seed count. Other than where we have our misses, it really isn't too bad. We can't fault the planter for that. We're looking at anywhere from uh, 248 down to 190 roughly. So we're looking at almost 58 bushel an acre versus our 20 inch rows. Now that's on the top side. If we go to the bottom side, we're looking someplace at around another 40 bushel the acre. At $5 a bushel, that's $200 an acre. So the importance of having our final count spaced properly is very, very important.